No, 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 I'm not making it up. I think you are. (laughs) Excuse me, I'm talking right now. (laughs) Don't interrupt us with your pesky show details. We've got a conversation going on here. Look who's back. Look who's back. Back again. Shady's back. What? I've just (laughs) just come back to work to make everybody here as ill as I have been for the last few days. And I'm going to go home and lay back down in my grave. Two teleport girls going around the outside. So tell me, we were having an interesting conversation, Ed, and you said, uh, you know, that... You thought that the first time that the idea came along to cook meat instead of eat it raw was yeah. when the animal got hit by lightning and the savages uh, maybe, were walking. Maybe, maybe the forest got hit by lightning and some of the denizens of that forest got a little cooked, a little hot under the collar, <laughs> decided to shed their outer layer. If you will, yeah, I know that's probably what happened, and they no, probably they probably said to, to you know to the slaves, he said, "Here, I'm going to give the slaves the burnt stuff." And the slaves are just, and they think, wait a minute, give me that. They swapped it. Right. Something like that, so right? So until then, they were eating it like tartar style? Tartar, yeah. Tartar. Tartar. That's right. <laughs> Maybe they were tartars. From? I don't know. From the jungle. From Mongolia. Um, big day in uh, cannabis today. Big uh, day. Just kidding. Nothing, nothing interesting happening. Um, oh, let's see what is happening. Oxley closed on their... $123 million short cover, I mean, debt instrument with uh, Imperial yeah. Brands. Um, Dan Bilzerian's... Uh, Listen, they, got, they cranked that baby up. If you put up, I'll put up a chart of that BILZ if you want. Why not? Yeah, let's take a look at that. And, and uh, yeah, there, there we go. There, there's a six-month chart. Okay, that's all you need. Look at this. Look at this action here. Uh, here, let me get a little. Uh, yeah, show us some. So, show us some of your mad technical analysis skills. Like, there, so Ed. we had a big run here, only to give back half of it. Now we've had another run, and we've had several red candles: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Out of sixteen, out of nineteen candles are red. We got three. Oh yeah, look at outside the band. You know, there's resistance here. Look, this this popped up kind of like, it's not like they're all popping up. This is unusual that it's moving, Contra, so maybe something, Dan's got something big going on. Promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because has there been any fundamental announcements about why his stock well, they, might they, be moving? Yeah, they did say, they did say, okay, okay. there's been no developments. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. That'll keep the Our bids stock coming is in. on the move because there's been no development. Yeah, well, there's nothing I can say right now. To just so buy the stock, huh? No, but I I think that's impressive. That, but but I think you told me that a lot of the uh, the the stock is uh, like the float. The float isn't that. Diverse, that well, I think the insider, the largest insider position, is registered to uh, somebody in the. In the uh, Caribbean archipelago, I think it's St. Bart's, and I think it's uh, Ethan uh, Bilzerian, which I believe would be Dan's brother. Really? Yeah. Really? That's what I think. Look, we got we got some we got lots of red there on our heat map, but we got a couple of nice blue ones too. Yeah. Um. Hey, you know what got smoked yesterday was blackberry. <clears throat> blackberry. Remember old blackberry? Do you blackberry? have a blackberry? Are you, yeah, I do, but it's at home. It doesn't work. I have three. Actually, one's a BlackBerry. Two are actually Samsung devices with BlackBerry run, running on it. Remember Obama used to have a BlackBerry? Yeah. Like it, was, it had the security platform that everybody wanted. They felt right. their security was second to none. Right. Actually, well, if you recall, all of the popular series on television back in 2011, everybody was using BlackBerrys. But... Somebody said something to somebody somewhere, and next season it was all Apple iPhones. 
but yeah. it was clear that the fix was in. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at BILZ. Enough of this tomfoolery. It's trading around two and change. Uh, okay, wow. You know, I just, just a comment. Blackberry six months ago was 1280, it's now 730. Hmm. Ah. I'd, I'd be buying Blackberry here for a trade. Really? Yeah, look, look at it. Look at it's outside the band. Look at this. Band, wow. Band on it really the run. fell out of bed. Well, yeah, well, bad, bad results. Uh, but look at this. This the second candle here. <coughs> That's what you kind of want to see. Hmm. If I wasn't getting my ass handed to me on a gold position today. Look, and there's the news. Ignite International, International confirms no material change. Wow. I know. Interesting. Fascinating. And, uh, now, so why is that moving? Now, why is that stock moving? I, well, I want to know. Obviously, it's not because of uh, any material change, as confirmed by the company. <laughs> no, no material change on this one. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so I don't know. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I'm trying to fix my NDI here. Oh, okay. Uh, great. Then before we do that, yeah, let's talk about what's what's coming up on my newsletter, Raw. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we have uh, Laura McCallum's going to deliver some news. Uh, Jake Highmark is here from Plus Products. I don't know if you've tried any of those gummies, but they're the number one selling gummy in California. Really? Yes. Have you got some, you got some samples? No, not on me. Martin Cronin will be here from Patriot One. Patriot One is the makers of the uh, Pat Scan. Yeah, how's, how's, it, how's it doing? Um, that's a good question. Let's pull up a let's pull up a chart. P A T trades under P A T on the uh, T S X. Oops. I'll take a look. Patriot One Technologies. Dollar fifty four. Dollar fifty four. I've got fifty five. I got a dollar fifty four and a half. Huh. <coughs> that that that's that's a candle. Like I'm just gonna. I got the chart up here, folks. I'm gonna put up a three month chart because that last candle. Looks interesting here. Look at, look at the tail on this candle. Whoops. Sorry. I'm almost almost to the point where I can go through a session here without making a mistake. Really? Look at that, look at that candle. The last one here. You got way down here. Big big tail. That might be the bottom for a while. Hmm. But most of those candles on that three months are red, aren't they? Yeah. And, and an inordinate amount of candles are red. Red candles. Red candles at night, sailors delight. Red, Red candles, candles in the morning, morning sailors, sailors take warning. warning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyways, here's Laura McCallum with some news. Here's what's making cannabis headlines this Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. Chiron Life Sciences has received approval from Invima, Columbia's health agency, to sell three additional Quita CBD skincare products. This expands on the seven products currently available at retail and online in Colombia, with first sales of the newly approved product expected in Q4. Cana One Technologies has entered into a memorandum of understanding with Level Out UK. Level One UK will act as the majority equity partner in a joint venture to service the UK market. Cana One will contribute to the JV exclusivity to their proprietary software for the UK market. FSD Pharma has signed a letter of intent to establish a joint venture with World Class Extractions Inc. The JV will develop and operate a cannabis extraction and processing facility to extract various cannabis oil and other hemp elements. The LOI replaces the license agreement entered between World Class and FV Pharma. FSD Pharma and World Class will each hold a 50% interest in the joint venture. Metafarm Labs has entered into a multi-year supply agreement with Terrasend. Metafarm Labs will supply Terrasend with approximately $27 million of high-quality private label cannabis distillate over 24 months, commencing September 2019. Terrasend will use this supply to support the production and launch of its exciting portfolio of branded products in Canada this fall. Farmacello has signed a United States sales agreement with an established multi-state distributor, General Extract. Farmacello will provide the distributor with bulk medicinal CBD isolate for sale in multiple states including California and Colorado. Tree of Knowledge International announced the company is expanding its current research project with Ryerson University to develop a new nanotechnology enhanced delivery method for medical cannabis and cannabinoid molecules. Added to their initial goal of creating target treatments for pain conditions is a pioneering application to combat cancerous tumors. Cresco Labs announced the closing of its previously announced public offering yesterday. 
The company issued 7.3 million units at a price per unit of $10 for gross proceeds of $73.5 million. Each unit consists of one subordinate voting share and one half of one subordinate voting share purchase warrant of the company at a price of $12.50 per share. The company has received approval from the Canadian Securities Exchange to list the warrants under the ticker symbol CL.WT. And that's your news for today. To keep up to date with all things cannabis, visit the Cannabis Daily on MidasLetter.com. Erythromycin. Yeah. Erythromycin, it's a... Uh, Antibiotic. Yeah, it's a... Really? Yeah. You're kidding. No. Uh, yeah. Well, what are you, what are you thinking here? Uh, uh, now, it looks like there's a bit of a smoking gun now they're talking about in, in Washington. Oh, you mean with Donald Trump getting impeached? Well, they're 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 Where trying. He's they're, actually they're, made a call to a, the, another government leader and asked them to that's investigate. That's what they do. A, he was asking opponent. him for cigars or something. He said, "Can I borrow some cigars? Some of right. those. Ukra Send me some of those great Ukrainian cigars that you're famous for. Yeah. Some of that Ukrainian uh, Polsky Ogorki. Yeah. And uh, oh, by while 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 you're at it, why don't you look up this guy? Yeah, His name is Biden, Biden Jr. Biden. You know, I found it curious, and I just want to point this out, that Biden himself said. He has no idea what his son was up to in the Ukraine. He had no idea his son was doing business in the Ukraine. They never talked about that. And I thought to myself, if my son had a business going in the Ukraine, I would think that would be a topic of a conversation over Sunday well, but, dinner. But, but he, they probably can't talk Ukrainian. How in hell are they going to talk about business in the Ukraine unless they can speak the language? Duh. <laughs> Ed, I love the way you think. See how that happens? Boy, you never thought wonder, of that, did you? I wonder we're making so much money around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah focused hey. on, we're focused on exactly the right things. By the way, here. any of you people out there got any leftover food that you don't want, just leave it up here at the office. But here, I'll tell you something. Here's how screwed up the... Uh, you know how we're supposed to be all panicking because there's this huge crisis coming in terms of ah. uh, antibiotic-resistant viruses and bacteria, etc. Right. And uh, so the doctor says to me, he says, I'm going to write you a prescription, and what you're going to do is you're going to take two on day one, and right. then you're going to take one for the next nine days until they're done. And they, I said, okay. But there's I, only six. I go, to the, I go to the pharmacist. Yeah. She says, here you go. You're going to have two today, and then you're going to eat one for the next four days until they're done. And I said... Excuse me, miss. That contradicts what the doctor said. She says, no, 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 this is right. Okay, so I take the package, and the package says, eat two on the first day, eat, and eat another one on days two and four, and, finish them, and then finish them off. One per day. So I got three sets of instructions where the numbers of pills right. I'm supposed to eat in total don't add up. It's like, no wonder, like if I was, if I was a resistant bacteria, I would be laughing my face off at us right now. Yeah. I'd be like, do you know that this is the number 50th most prescribed medicine in the American pharmacopoeia? 15 million prescriptions last year. Yeah. No, I've had that, that, that prescription, that exact one, because it's two on the first day, and then every, you know, one every one. You know. There's only six pills. They must be pretty strong. Well, this is one thing I've noticed is I've got a furry tongue. Tums? Tongue. On a, here, give it a rub. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure. <laughs> you don't want to touch my tongue? There's another way of doing it. What's wrong with you? Come on. That's another way of doing it. Yeah, well, I'm passing on diseases. Anyways, so the, uh, the throat infection I was alleged to have had was called streptococcal. Strep throat. Strep, well. Streptococcal throat. <laughs> Can you spell streptococcal? Uh, S T R E P T O C O C C A L. Can you spell it without looking? Mm, no. no. Now I can actually. S T R. No, uh, never mind. Okay. Anyways, enough of that clever okay, ass bullshit. Okay. So, so. Okay. Let's talk about cannabis stocks, Ed. You know that's why we founded this show, and that's something we yeah. almost very rarely do these days. Yeah. I've got I, some tea here. Uh, you know, I see. I see. Have you ever had lemon zinger tea? Lemon zinger? No. Yeah. No. Nope. Well, do I want get mine? Nope. Can't have mine. Nope. Um, there's the four indexes. Let's just contemplate those for a moment, shall we? Collectively. And look at... There's a, there's a, there's a tea that has a really good aroma. It's, it's F-A-R-T. 
Well, I think I've had F-A-R-T. I've definitely been in the room when somebody's had, having yeah. F-A-R-T. <laughs> Have we really descended into that kind of toilet level humor now? Scatological humor, F A R T. Because mm. that would that would make I that would mark a new low for another our show. Another T could be called S H I T. <laughs> Jesus said, "I think you're on a tear today." Okay. I think. Okay. I think we're going to have to make this the Ed Maliski scatological humor hour. Scatological show. Scatological. Is that what they call you, scatterbrain? <laughs> hey, you know what? My That's mother what turns eighty. Shithead. My mother turns eighty years old today. Happy birthday, Mom, if you're watching. She never watches. 80. 80. Nice age. Nice age. 80% to the, to the century mark. And here's the thing about my mom. She doesn't look like she's slowing down one bit. Like, seriously. She's got, you know, no, no shortage of things to say every time we, we talk every Sunday as a family. So, would call. you say you get your girlish nature from your mother? Girlish nature? Girlish. <laughs> Gar girlish. You think I have a girlish I nature, do you, Edward? Talkative nature. Okay, I'll say it's... <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, I would say that uh, my, a great word. <laughs> my proclivity towards conversation emanates with my father, actually. So they're both talkers. They're both talkers. But that, sometimes that doesn't work. That, well, two talkers make a non-talker makes. Two talkers talking makes one non one to talk. If you've got three people in a room and two talkers, I guess the third one better be a non-talker. Otherwise, well, it's it, just going to yeah. be three people interrupting each other. My father was the one who came up with the best expression. He used to say, excuse me for talking while you're interrupting. <laughs> that was one wow. of his classics. Anyway, so my mom turns 80. Wow. My father dies when he's 63. I figure I got a good chance of making it somewhere to the middle. And if I play my cards right, 72. <clears throat> that's not so bad unless you're like 67-ish. <laughs> well, guess, what, I, guess who's going to be... Six. Not 67 for very long. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I As a matter of fact... A few hours. A few hours, yeah. yeah uh, that's funny. I will always remember your birthday because it's the day after my mother's 80th birthday. And I'll always remember my birthday because it's one day after your mother's birthday. <laughs> You'll never forget I'll your never own forget birthday again. Birthday now. Holy Happy smokes. birthday to you. You know what? What's exactly nine minutes? Oh, after. yes. Ed's birthday celebration tomorrow night at El Mercado. BYOB. <laughs> you know, Don't think you know, the bar uh, would like you know what? Your mother, my your mother. mother was Is conceived. My mother coming? Your mother was conceived on December 25th. Hmm. I just want to say. On December 25th? Well, nine months before September 25th is December My mother 25th. is the holy mother? <laughs> Very. I got it. I got No, that's her birthday. She was conceived on the... I said she was conceived on Christmas Day. Damn, I thought this was about me. Or <laughs> well, I guess that's a good thing no, for no, my mother to be there. You know what? A lot, of, a lot of men get a nice Christmas present around Christmas. And nine months later, they get the real present. Really? Hmm. I wonder if a lot my of people, grandfather I know because I, I'm, I'm one of those Christmas babies. You were good news or bad news? Oh, I was... Unbelievable news. <laughs> you were up there, a little bouncing bundle of joy. Yeah. That they wanted to bounce on their knee. Yeah. Huh. I'm anyway, trying to picture that. <laughs> I should bring in some pictures. I, I think we should have a show tomorrow. And uh, that's always fun, eh? Showing pictures of yourself to everybody. They're so interesting. When you were a baby. Because it's really easy to see the features in a middle-aged adult oh. in the baby. Oh. Anyways, I think we better switch to let's, uh, let's conversation with Jake Heimark from uh, Plus Products. How okay, about that? Let's do that. Let's do I'm joined now by uh, Plus Products CEO Jake Heimark. Jake, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Jake, uh, I mean, among the obvious things that have changed since we last chatted in Los Angeles, I guess that was several months ago, uh, you've, you've got a partnership with John Legend, which is, uh, to me, astounding. I mean, the guy is, is a legend in every way, shape, and form. Uh, tell me about that partnership. How did it come about? What's the significance for a uh, shareholder in Plus Products? Sure. So last week, we announced a partnership with John Legend and Casper, the sleep company in bringing a CBD product nationally. So at Plus, we've been focused for a long time in doing what we call bringing balance to people's lives. And we've done that with THC products. And now we have a CBD product that we can ship to 43 states across the US 
uh, directly to consumers from our website. And John's joined as a really great advocate for us. I think he has a lot of credibility, um, sort of this being an authority and things that are good for you. And that's a really important piece to a company uh, in a crowded marketplace. Sure, you bet. Um, so your, your best-selling product is still your gummies? It is, and that's the products that we brought in CBD as well nationally. It's, it's still the number one and number two sellers in California. Wow, so that's pretty significant then. It is. People like our products. More than 50% of them come back and buy them again. We're really focused on delivering products that you can use every day. Um, and there's been a lot of noise lately around vaping uh, and the potential dangers of it. We think if you're going to use something every day, having a food product is a really safe way to actually enjoy it. And we're proud that people are uh, agree with us and are buying our products. Yeah, and it seems the uh, shareholders are, love what you're doing because your stock certainly hasn't suffered, suffered the slings and arrows that the whole sector has. Uh, is that a largely a function of your financial position, your financial reporting? I think we have a good balance sheet and we have a very clear identity. I think there are a lot of companies that are trying to do a lot of different things and it is very difficult to do one thing very well. And at plus we make really good foods and we're a really strong brand. And I think that that's resonating with some of our shareholders. Um, it is a tough market right now for a lot of companies, but we're proud that we've weathered the storm. Yeah, you bet. Um, how soon until we see plus products in every state where cannabis is legal? So our first strategy in going to every state was having a CBD product where we can actually get our brand there today. I think it's really important that as of last week, we are now able to market and deliver products directly to people's homes. Um, we've announced that in Q3, you will see us in Nevada, and we're not changing that guidance, even though uh, we are coming up shortly at the end of Q3. So that's why I'm in Nevada today. Oh, perfect. Um, CBD products, now you can ship those into any state right now, can't you? 43 states we can ship them in. You can't do it in certain ones like North Dakota or Iowa. Oh, really? So those states have opted not to participate in the legalized sort of framework that's been evolved as a result of, I guess that was the Farm Act? Yeah, there, there's a farm bill that was passed last year that clarified some of the rules on hemp. Um, the FDA is supposed to, was supposed to give guidance this summer. They're likely to come out with it sometime this fall. And there are a few states that aren't participating yet. I think that as people learn more and more about CBD, there are going to be more and more states that legalize it, especially on the edible side, given all the dangers that we're learning about vaping. Right. Okay, so now what about the uh, significance of this Safe Banking Act? Has that had any any benefit any does that add any improvement to the uh to the cannabis sector in california or nevada i think it is a huge sign uh for the whole industry and one that helps companies like ours especially ones that are smaller starting out and the largest ones get access to banks that previously wouldn't even talk to us um, there's a quite a few investment banks for example here in the u.s who wouldn't even have a discussion because retail banks weren't even allowed to bank us so even if they wanted to do business with us they wouldn't know where to put the money um, and I think that's going to start to change now that this has passed. I think in the long history of cannabis, a few years from now, we're going to look back on the Safe Banking Act as the first federal bill that actually started to change things. And it's really exciting. Oh, wow. So it's more significant than some people recognize. I think when you're as close to the forest uh, as some people are, sometimes all you see is the trees. Yeah. And I think this is a huge change. It is a federal bill that allows people to bank. Right. Um, so, <laughs> interestingly, it's been suggested to me that that is also going to cause problems for some, uh, some legal market participants who augment their supply chain with elements of the unregulated market uh, because the absence of banking uh, has sort of permitted a, an ability to operate that way. Is that something that you concur with or is that not such a big deal? I don't know, but I certainly hope so. Uh, shame on them. I think at Plus, what we've focused on is building a, a company our grandmas can be proud of. And right. at the end of the day, in the illegal market, you're not competing on brand. You're just moving things you know, to the only customers who are there. Mm -hmm. We are huge fans of regulation. We think that it drives stronger brands, and it's better for customers, and it's safer. So um, 
I hope that none of the companies change their revenues much because it would mean they were up to some unsavory stuff. Right. Um, okay, so the the House is anticipated to back the Safe Banking Act, but they still think that there, uh, there could be some resistance in the Republican-controlled Senate. Is the general consensus there that this thing is going to fly, or is it going to run into terminal resistance in the Senate? If I could predict this government, I would be able to do a lot more than just run plus. That's for sure. This thing is crazy. <laughs> um, I think we'll know when Trump's Twitter feed tells us what happened. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's enough discussion about U.S. politics. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay. What are the next What are the next big moves for Plus Products in the industry? What's going to really drive you guys into the next sort of revenue zone? So our strategy at Plus has always been win California, win the U.S., and then win the world. And hmm. we've now taken our products, which are the number one and number two in California. We're able to introduce them nationally with CBD. And we'll use that in what we call forward marketing to open up new THC markets. And then with our brand already there, and then we'll look to go international. And I think Canada is an interesting place, but actually European CBD is a place that I think often gets overlooked and it is a huge market. Right. Huh. Yeah, actually I was in London um, 10 days ago and I actually made a point of going to visit all of the stores that were, not all of them, but a good swath of the stores that were selling CBD products. And I found it interesting that you couldn't find any product on the shelf in the UK that contained anything more than like 2.5 milligrams of CBD per dose. And 2.5 milligrams of CBD is not nothing, but it's not significant, at least in terms of some of the, some of the more reliable effects of CBD, like uh, mental clarity, ability to sleep, improved gastrointestinal sort of stability. So I think there's a huge opportunity in the, in the UK and in Europe, if that's what they're putting out there as products now. I can't wait to see your products there. What has to happen for that to occur? The regulatory regimes are pretty clear. I think the, what someone like Plus has to do is open up a plant and start making it. Um, in the, at the end of the day, products that are efficacious, meaning the ones that work, are going to be what people buy. Uh, in the United Kingdom right now, you can buy a hundred and, for 150 pounds, you can buy about 10 milligrams of CBD at Harrods. Uh, when you can charge that much for so little CBD, I understand why they're not putting in more. But if you want to build a brand in the long run, I think that if you don't include enough to actually do something, you're not going to have customers coming back and buying your product again. Right. My, my, I was implying that you're not limited by any regulation in the United States as a U.S. company from setting up a plant, as you say, and selling product into the U.K. at this point. We are not, um, hmm. as a because we're a Canadian company uh, listed on the CSE. Um, we can, you know, do things with the UK. I think that it's hard to import to the UK from the US right now, which means you have to manufacture locally. But that's what we have to do in the United States. We have to manufacture separately in each state for THC. So that's sort of our bread and butter here at Plus. You bet. Um, okay, Jake. So what else have you guys got on the product horizon? You've got this new CBD product. Um, you're focused on foods. Well, how do you expand that out into the next generation of products? At Plus, we're always going to be focused on products that you don't have to heat up and inhale. Uh, we believe that it's really important for brands to have an identity, and ours all is about not hurting you. And we think if you're going to use it every single day, that things that you don't inhale, whether that's tinctures, we actually sell mints already, uh, gummies, chocolates, other food beverages, other foods are going to be the way that it makes sense to build a brand around. And I don't think it's one brand. I think there are different brands to be built um, under an umbrella that will help people uh, not only in the case of Plus take the edge off of their days, but maybe get some relief as well. And there's also one for some escapism and, you know, when you want to watch a football game. Um, right. And we think that we're going to have products and all of the above, but one thing that we're going to st stay or our core is really around things that you don't smoke. Right. I can't say as I am more on board with that than ever before, having just gone through uh, about 10 days since I got back from London of a really bad throat infection associated with... Uh, um, you know, vaping. I've got to. I've got to admit, it was. Uh, I started vaping heavily because I get a lot of people want me to try their products. So I vaped quite heavily throughout the summer, and I found that it actually had an ongoing 
detrimental effect to my respiratory capacities, which I could tell every time I went for my uh, longer distance bike rides. So, and then the throat infection. That was the final straw. I've stopped vaping everything, and I, I don't think I'm going to smoke anything ever again. But uh, all right, Jake, let's leave it there for now. We're going to come back to you in due course. Wish you the best of luck, and I can't wait to see your products one day on the shelves in Canada and Europe. Thanks so much. Have a good one, and thanks for having me. Thank you. You too, Jake. Bye for now. If you're enjoying the show, subscribe to Midas Letter on YouTube so you stay up to date on everything investment. What should we talk about when we come back? I have a object in my ear. <laughs> uh. <laughs> For a minute, you remind me of Gabby Hayes, sir. <laughs> Who's Gabby Hayes? You don't know who Gabby Hayes is? No. Gabby Hayes is an old, uh, 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 well, was an actor from yesteryear. Yes. Did, did a lot of westerns and things, and yep. he, he had he always wore his hat like cockamini. You, you got to just you know, Gabby Hayes is, was a character, really? character actor, a character actor. Yeah, a presence. You can you can look him up, Gabby right. Hayes. Who's Gabby Hayes? You'll you'll will. you'll recognize him. All right, I will do that. Um, so. The well, cannabis industry, like we're down to, uh, we've got 79 viewers on our in our group right now. I just want to uh, say hello to some. Jason Garza is here. Bob right. Daku, JG. Hello, right. hello. Reefer Al Joint. Hello, hello. Nika. Hello, Nika. Who's Martin Cronin? <laughs> well, Martin's going to take umbrage with that comment. Martin's not in the cannabis industry, though, Nika. So you're forgiven. Martin's in the security technology industry. Um, but uh, let's see here, who else? Matthew Broadshaw, hello, David Marks. I don't believe we've seen you here before. Maybe have Ivan Black, there's Ivan, hello Ivan. But anyways, just wanted to say hello there. Uh, yeah, everybody's waiting for the Safe uh, Banking Act to be uh, either voted on or not voted on. Okay. The Safe Banking Act, um, as we were discussing with Jake Highmark, is, uh, is going to give marijuana operators access to institutions like regular banks so that they no longer have to conduct all of their transactions in cash and you know it's caused a real problem but at the same time um, I have it on good authority that the absence of banking has also facilitated a black market overlap into the uh, into the legitimate market yeah because uh, inability to track cash means you can't really keep an eye on where that necessarily came from or where that cash is going. So uh, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see. I, I think it's going to be a blessing for the legal industry and an absolute curse for the black market industry. Well, you, you know, we talked about this last week about how by making marijuana legal, it's made it more difficult to sort of follow the people that are in the black market. Well, unless you're in Toronto, they just open up store down, uh, store after store here, and uh, yeah. they get arrested. But we talked to one guy who's apparently making like $2 million a month. $2 million a month. And he's like, if I'm making that money, why wouldn't I just pay the fines? And he's just like thumbing his nose at the police, at yeah. the legal system. Uh, and that's the problem with the black market in Canada, is the absence of enforcement. And it's not like they haven't tried, like they've certainly made some arrests, but I think when it gets to court, it gets tossed out on constitutional grounds. Because how can you give a selection of citizens the right to produce a plant while denying it to the right of another based on just regulation? Right. Yeah, right. I, you know what? It's, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, you know what? Today we got we got the market up 17, 18 points on the S and P. Uh -huh. uh, no, nothing, no, no new trend that I can see. We're still sort of range bound. Range bound. Uh, but but you know, interestingly enough, interest rates the 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 uh, the, the ten year rate has gone from one sixty three yesterday. Ten year. The ten year rate. The, ten year. Uh, ten year. You got your the ten year is ten years. One sixty three. It's now one seventy two. So rates are going up today. And that, that's across the board. There's very few places that are, it's all, it's like everything's a one, you know, when rates go up, they go up everywhere. Really? Kind of. Huh. Well, 
<laughs> Anyways, um, what do you make of this uh, esports industry, Edward? We have a new segment that we're going to start doing on esports. It's going to be uh, the new wave esports moment. <coughs> oh, my screen! <coughs> Um, and the company that's sponsoring this is New Wave Esports. I, I know a little bit about New Wave. You do? Yeah. So what do you uh, know about Trumbull, the esports? Trumbull is the, uh, I believe Trumbull's either the uh, What do you know about the esports industry? Well, it seems to be something that's keeping a lot of young guys off the streets. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like, no, they between say, the cannabis they say, industry. They say that it's, it, young men are now, instead of out, doing crazy things out and about. They're at home watching, uh, playing eSports. So between the cannabis industry yeah. and the eSports industry. A lot of young women out there are looking for their men. <laughs> really? I think so. And they're like, no, nah, not, not now, honey. I got a game going I got a, I got a, yeah. I don't, uh, Well, I don't. Anyway, so eSports, though, is threatening to become this new crazed investment, the next big investment wave. Right. And uh, the CEO of, uh, of New Wave Esports is going to be our regular commentator. He's going to be our source. We're going to cover this at least twice a month, possibly a lot more. It depends on the availability. Sure, sure. Um, New Wave is a company that's going to be going public in October. Uh, so I don't know what the symbol is there yet, but I just wanted to throw that out there. That's, that the, we're former, that's the former true claim. But let's take a look at EGLX, for instance. That's a, that's a competitor. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, do you want you want to look at that? Well, that'll talk about the uh, industry. EGLX, yeah, enthusiast gaming. All I want to do there is uh, is give you an idea how it because it, it just debuted recently, didn't it? Okay, here we are at two ten. Oh, look at okay. What's that? Just debuted. E uh, EGLX. Yeah. Uh, no, no I, I guess that's not true. It, it jumped though. On a merger that they did, yeah, that's it. And hmm. it okay, so it's up, it's up nicely from where it was. Yeah, so they they merged with. Um, see, see, there's the, your base. They not made their announcement. Big gap, and it's drifting a little lower, but holding in here. Yeah, they did that uh, deal with Aquilini out on the west coast, and so merged, but. Uh, the, the big thing about esports is, and this is why it's important to be following this industry very closely, if you look at the esports companies out there, there's very few of them that are making money. In fact, one might argue that none are making money. And so New Wave Esports is a sort of uh, an investor in the space, an incubator. And so they're going to be very focused on which ones are making money. So that's why we're starting this sort of uh, coverage is because we want to when we find one that makes money, we want to be on the early side of that. Right. Like it seems like making money is the, is the, is the sort of the... Uh, Whole reason for being in the stock market? The holy grail of, of fi Investing? finance. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just saying... Maybe Boy, maybe you are so quick, Ed. I think maybe we've hit <laughs> on something here. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a real relationship between the companies that do well and the ones that make money. What do you think? You're not going to give me anything on this one, are you? You're just going to sit there and go, let this guy stick his other foot in his mouth. <laughs> look at I, I, I don't like, know what to say, Ed. No, you know, you know what? That's the problem. Like a lot of companies, look at, look at for instance, you know, Uber doesn't make money. <laughs> yeah, but Uber's been a disaster from the outset. Uber is... Uber. I, uh, excuse me. <laughs> they've raised how many billions of dollars in the last funding? That's not a disaster. Well... If you're Depends. sitting there, if you're sitting oh, really? there, let's see you sell one of those shares you bought. A okay. fraud does not necessarily no, constitute a disaster sell. for the fraudsters. You can sell, but it certainly does for the shareholder. <coughs> fraudsters. <coughs> yeah, you're going to see. You're going to see. Ultimately, Uber is going to collapse into nothing because it can't sustain I, I, itself. The, the taxi industry never went public because it's not a sustainable business where you have to complete, continuously replace the cars at your expense. I mean, it's, you, you'll see. It's going to happen. I okay. Wrote, okay, here we go. I got an Uber up here. You care? Sure. There you go. There's your Uber. And now you're telling me. Oh, what, what, oh I see. It went public? Yeah, oh, it did. When, when did it go public? I was, where was I? I was out of the room. <laughs> Here's, here it went public, okay. And date? And then, What's and the date on that? That's, uh, this is a six-month chart. 
Huh. So that would be five months ago, four and a half, five months ago, early May. Look at this. And, and this moving average line, the red one, to your point, they're having some issues here, right? But, okay. But, so but you know, you could have bought Facebook. It came out and it dropped. And yeah. you could have bought all you wanted at 17, 18 bucks. I remember. And I remember some big guys stepping in. I'm thinking, you idiots, you're not buying any of this shit. Stock went to 200 after the fact. Maybe this is going to 200. They start making dough. Maybe. Maybe pigs will know. sprout wings and begin flying. That's the U.S. model, though. They, 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 a lot of these IPOs never make money. We're seeing it that with the, what's the name of that company where this Newman guy's got all the. WeWork. Now, what the hell is WeWork? WeWork is shared office space. They claim to be the first, the biggest, and the best. But here's what's hilarious is Regis has been renting out shared office space around the world for a decade. So they're the first, they're actually the biggest, and they're actually the best because they don't have a, a Jesus-looking uh, CEO. You know, this is, this is the problem. You, you can't hire a party animal, or you can't finance a party animal who's trying to be like a 48... 40 year old teenager and take this thing into the billion dollar stratosphere. That's why he's now stepped down. Uh, Adam Neumann. <clears throat> but, anyways, let's talk to uh, Martin Cronin, who will soon be making money with uh, Patriot One Technologies. Martin Cronin joins me now. He's the CEO of Patriot One Technologies, Inc., trading on the TSX under the symbol PAT. Martin, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Martin, it's been a while since we've chatted. Tell me what's new with Patriot One. Well, the big news uh, that you would have seen is the acquisition of uh, Extracts AI out of Vancouver. Uh, this is a, a, a huge strategic uh, move for us. Uh, as you know, uh, AI is an important component of, of all that we do. We use algorithms to make sense of complex data from our hardware. We uh, recognize that we uh, wanted to beef up our, our AI team good developers in the space are extremely hard to get hold of and you can spend a very long time finding the right people they're very expensive and just difficult to get or you can go down the route of an acquisition um, we happily found uh, extract in vancouver who had real sort of domain expertise in our space uh, they were working on a number of projects for dnd around data fusion sensor fusion uh, a lot of um, experience with the type of hardware and sensors that we use so it was a really natural fit and a great strategic move for us. So by virtue of that acquisition, we're really sharpening up all of our algorithms and we can really advance the, uh, the, the, plat the multi-sensor platform development, how all these sensors live together, uh, communicating effectively to uh, create the, the gold standard of detection. Uh, that sounds interesting. So the uh, acquisition essentially gives you deeper bench strength in the uh, in the AI development realm. That's right. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, then, so tell me, how is the rollout and the path towards commercialization of the combined system offering going in terms of its evolution into real world use? So this is uh, the, the 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 quarter that we're that, that lies ahead of us. Here is going to be a really busy one for our for our engineers and our partners. As you know, we announced some uh, new partnerships, uh, particularly that with Johnson Controls. Um, we are right now building the systems for those commercial deployments of the of uh, the multi-sensor platform. So this is a really busy time ahead of us, and we're we're very excited. Um, overlaid on that, we've got the as I say the um, real sharpening up of the of the algorithms around this, and so getting out there into multiple with our key distribution partners, key systems integration partners, will give us a whole lot more data that we can work with. The more data we have, the, 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 the faster the evolution of these systems. So this is a really important time for us and uh, the team are working flat out. Have you uh, had any instances in any of your field trials where the system has actually uh, triggered a alert? Uh, well, absolutely all the time. But what we are very careful to do, all of our early uh, deployments, all of our pilots at this point, have been under our control so that we uh, can make sure that we get the system performance that we need uh, because, you know, as you can well understand, the last thing that uh, a company in the space would need is to hand over equipment and uh, be, have uncertain results and then have a failure which leads to uh, injury or loss of life. So everything we've done in the field to date has been around uh, working with the client partner to manage the systems 
to uh, overlay them on existing security measures um, so that we're not introducing a risk to them until they're satisfied that, they, that, that the performance is what we need and they need. So that's what we've been doing you know, up until this point. You know. Has It's been like over two years since you've been uh, rolling this out, Martin. Have there been any competitors come along? I mean, I've seen other uh, sort of Me Too competitors emerge in the capital markets context, but nobody has, has you know, emerged to be in an advanced position relative to Patriot. Is there any real competition out there at this point? Well, certainly uh, there has always been some competition there in the sense that people have been working on threat detection for many years with, you know, conventional means of metal detectors, security guards with wands, you know, camera systems, uh, millimeter wavelength scanners. New competitors have emerged with, um, you know, more advanced versions of, of, of these sorts of technologies. And, you know, as we have always said, wish anybody well that's, uh, that's out there in the public security space trying to make a difference. So, you know, we're not in the business of running down uh, the, the competition that's out there. I think you're right that nobody has emerged that, that is in a, um, a more, uh, you know, forward edge position than us. What I would say is that we um, are fundamentally different from everything else that we see out there in that we are getting away from fixed visible security infrastructure where you have screening checkpoints that people queue up to go through uh, and are screened at that point. Uh, the approach that we have always taken is to have widely dispersed network, smart sensors, low cost. So you put the screening out to places where the people are rather than bringing people to the point of screening. And what we have found through our work is that there is no one single technology solution that can do it all in all environments. You know, all of our early stages of getting out into the real world shows, showed all of the, the difficulties of the multiplicity of real world environments. And we decided, you know, two years ago, we would need multiple uh, sensors to give us the kind of protection we need. And so, whereas there is competition with a single technology stream, I think we're pretty unique in the sense of bringing together best of breed, best of breed technologies and fusing them together on a single plan so that we can do effective detection in, in all environments. You announced a relationship with Raytheon Canada earlier this year, and I'm curious yeah. as to what has that resulted in in terms of collaborative environment? It, it, it sounds... Um, uh, uh, simplistic or venal, but the key thing is money, frankly. <laughs> you know, they, uh, uh, Raytheon have been putting funding uh, behind our development. They also, of course, have huge technical uh, and domain expertise and uh, 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 really unparalleled uh, networks overseas. Now that we're in a position to roll out, you know, commercial deployments, we can start to develop um, that sort of collaborative working in, in other markets. Up until this point, it's been very direct support of our development efforts and uh, you know now we go to market then uh, we can we can bring to bear all of the other things that a huge corporation like that can do and indeed of course uh, with our other partners Cisco, IBM, Johnson Controls. Sure. Um, Raytheon is a you know sort of one of the one of the 800 pound gorillas in the in the technology uh, or rather in the defense space so I thought that their uh, participation in Patriot One was very much a, uh, a an industry stamp of endorsement um, of your technology. They must have conducted quite a bit of due diligence prior to agreeing to finance the company. It was a it, it was a long process, and and as you well know, we had um, we we put out a release saying that we were working on a, a on a deal with a major defense prime quite some time before we could announce the details. Even that announcement was the result of many, many months of discussion. So it was a long process, uh, as mm -hmm. you rightly pointed out. Uh, companies like this don't go lightly into that sort of relationship, and nor indeed do the other major parts that, that we have. That we have, you know, our, our relationship with Cisco goes from strength to strength. Uh, I think really based on what they see of, of what we have and what we do, how we work, the technologies that we have. Um, you know that that's a relationship which is just just building a, a, a fabulous pace over time. So, you know the, these major partnerships, as you rightly point out, um, are not entered into lightly. They they are a, a a major stamp of credibility as far as we're concerned, and it's just a it's a pleasure to work with uh, organisations that have such deep strengths and experience. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I can't, I was sort of surprised at the absence of a response from the markets in, uh, in relation to that, uh, that deal with Raytheon, but I guess the significance of Raytheon in the defense space is lost on the general investing public, which is fine. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to belabor that point. Happy to wait till they figure yeah. it out. But uh, okay, so then um, what is the next big move for Patriot? I mean, uh, I get a sense that investors must be looking for big commercialization and big numbers coming from that. Is, is that some pressure that you're feeling from investors? Oh, we, we feel the pressure every day. And I, and I fully understand that what people need to see now is, is revenue. And they've been saying that for, for a long time. I fully understand that. Uh, I mean, we are all shareholders in the company and we, uh, you know, we, 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 we share the same you know, uh, desire as, as all other shareholders. And we recognize that really what people want to see is, is revenue. We have had to be very, very careful about how we, we go about rollout. Firstly, for, for the reason I mentioned that we, we simply can't go out there and have failures because that would uh, really set us back. Um, secondly, if we try to do uh, everything by ourselves, let, let's say you know, we sent our engineers out to everybody that said, you like one of your, your PATSCAN uh, platform uh, solutions, you know, we, what would we do, 12 in a year or something, and lose money on every one of them flying engineers around the country. The, the only way really to do this rollout uh, effectively and to be able to scale this opportunity is through major partnerships. And that's why we've devoted such attention, so much time to developing these key strategic relationships. That's the way in which we can get out and do this at scale. And so I know it's, it, it's frustrating for you know, we get investors calling and saying, hey, my, my cousin's got a restaurant you know, in Louisiana would like one of your systems and then they're, they're upset that you don't fly down there and install it. And, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, the, the, the strong desire to see revenue and we're absolutely focused on that. And now's the point at which we can start to get out there and show that. But we're doing this through a distribution, you know, channel partnership model, because that's the only way to be able to scale this. So I know that it's, it's much slower than people would have liked, slower than I would have liked, but it, it is the right way to do it as far as I'm concerned. Okay, great, okay. Martin. Well, that's an excellent update. I appreciate your time. We'll come back to you soon. That's great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, Subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. And we're back. Um, <coughs> did we, you own any shares in Patreon One? <coughs> no, sir. No, sir. I, I don't know. You know what? I've decided that I, I want to keep li stay liquid and trade. I want to I want to try and trade when I see an opportunity. You know, my biggest my biggest mistake was in the last year and a half trading. <laughs> no, no, my biggest mistake selling. No, buying was going into and and I and I, I say this without any I'm, I'm saying if your timing's wrong, like if you're trying to pick a, a bottom, pick you know, have you ever picked your bottom? Yeah. What's that feel like? <coughs> Itchy. Some, sometimes it, it feels, feels good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Clean it up. <coughs> yeah. So, so you like if you go into an area, and I, I was trying to bottom fish the, the copper because mm -hmm. it looked like copper was going to go. Yeah. A year and a half later, it's a lot lower. I, I've lost a fair amount of capital. Yeah. Try. I think I'm, I want to rather wait to see evidence of a turn and then load it, load the truck, load the truck, like the turnip truck, for instance. Ah. Oh. Were you driving the turnip truck? <laughs> I hope not, because that would make you a turnip truck driver, and that means my co-host would be a turnip truck driver in his part, spare time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you hear that uh, the state of Massachusetts has imposed a four-month ban on all vaping products, including cannabis and tobacco? Uh, I published a piece yesterday that I, I saw was, that. I read did you? it on your. <coughs> Are you I, kidding I, me? I, you read it. Called Midas letter. <coughs> wow. A doc, it, it, well, they must have plagiarized it because it was extremely well ri ri written. <laughs> Did you plagiarize that? It you was plagiarized. It was so well written. What? That was a great. You're, pull, you're pulling my leg. What? Well, I'm pulling your leg. My hands are over here. <laughs> Anyways, that was really well written. I don't know. Who'd you get to do that? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> 
Why are you laughing at? Oh, what are you telling me you wrote it? <laughs> Gee, I had nothing I, better to do. I, I was no lying idea. there on the couch like this with my feet up, you know, basically inhaling pro, uh, expectorated whatever was coming out of my body because of serpent. Expectorant. Anyway, so then the next day, Massachusetts uh, bans vaping. All you, vaping. I know. You know. You know what? I think there's something in the process of vaping that has it. It, it, for some reason, your lungs are having a problem with it. Yeah, well, if you look at a bird. I don't vape. You don't vape. I, I smoke. I smoke pot. You burn it. I burn it. I, 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 fly, I take the flower. So here's the thing. Maybe smoking is better for you than vaping. Uh, yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows that. <laughs> oh, you started getting you know, contra contraptions and stuff. What? Is vaping like a bong? Is vaping like a bong? I don't know. Is a monkey like a fish? But what's a bong? A what's bong is a type of... A bong is a water pipe. Okay. A so hookah. basically... A hookah. No, not a hookah. No, a hookah is a form of bong. But a bong is not necessarily a hookah. Do you know what the difference is? The way it's spelled. No. Well, that too. Okay. But also, the hookah comes with a long tube. Fibrous tube. So the hookah pipe stands on the table. Yeah. And you smoke what's in the hookah through the tube. But a bong has got... The bowl on the on the the bowl has water in it, and then you put whatever you're smoking in the little pipe bowl, and you lift the whole bong and you smoke through the bong itself. So the difference is the hose. The hose. The hose. When you see the hose smoking the bongs, that's when you know you got to self. It's time to go. We got our winner. <laughs> it's time to go. Winner, winner. The hose Chicken beyond dinner. the bongs. Hey, did you know you could ship your pants? Can I ship my pants too? You can ship your pants anywhere you want. Well, <coughs> it's it's okay to ship your pants, Ed. Yeah. Although I was told that the at the border they don't like it when a pair of pants shows up in a FedEx box. They don't, eh? No, because it means that somebody shipped their pants. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 I don't know Jesus. whether it's you that's making me laugh this much. Anyways, uh, I think so you're just glad to be back. Well, I'm glad to be alive, put it that way. I'll tell you what, when you get that sick, you actually get a real appreciation just for the basic act of getting out of bed and I feeling know. like I know. you're not going to collapse. I tell you, it makes you very happy. Did you ever turn your ankle so badly that you couldn't walk? Like, you, you uh, I used to actually regularly spr sprain my ankle on when I lived on Bowen. I used Is to do these mountain you hikes. Used to, you used to run, like, yeah. run away from the police? Well, I never run towards them. <laughs> what kind of idiot runs towards so you, the police? So you, you Actually, on Bowen ankle, Island, you did know. You, did you ever have to lie down for like for three or four days because you couldn't walk? Mm, well, no, no. There's the doctors have said in since then that I should have lied down for a few days and my ankle wouldn't be so uh, compromised, but. I used to sprain it so bad that I actually ordered these ankle braces from uh, Amazon because I'd do these mountain runs. I used to have this trail behind my house that would go up the mountain. I'd do a 7 kilometer or a 12 kilometer run almost every day. Really? Yeah. And then I got a Baker cyst on my knee. Baker? My, Baker. Baker cyst? Baker cyst. It's like the exorcist. Oh, the, the Baker cyst. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 thank you for explaining now, it's making, now I know. Now it's making perfect sense. Uh, yeah, what else is going on well, let's, today? Let's take a look at the S&P, because okay. it's, it's... Really get depressed. No, no, I think it had a, it had a pretty, a, a pretty uh, interesting performance today. In fact, I got it up right now. You got it up? <laughs> How long did that take? <laughs> well, through the just miracles Just out of curiosity. Of, yeah, just out of curiosity. Okay. Miracles of modern science, you got it up? Jeez, it's amazing what goes on around here. And so, so look. Here we are, there's the all-time high, right there. And it, it failed here. Had a bad day yesterday, but followed by a good day today. Really? I, in, 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 indecisive, but that basing that uh, ch the charting man Dan talked about back, uh, back in uh, August, still, we're above it, we're, we're in there. So, I don't know, I, I don't know what to tell you. It, I think it can go either way at this point, but I wouldn't surprise me because I, I just think the Fed's got a lot of uh, ammunition. And, uh, you know, they're putting in a lot of money in the system because I guess short term there's no cash for some reason. What's hmm. going on? 
I don't know. I think that the uh, the banking system is set up so that they can, uh, under cover of complex financial transactions, basically transfer the wealth of the nation uh, in large percentage, large proportion to uh, a select group of high net worth, you know, essentially elite financial interests, while the rest of us fight over the scraps. And I think it's basically a fraud being perpetrated on humanity by the government. Yeah. And does that make me a conspiracy theorist? I hope it does. You know, I think ever since, ever since, you know, you, you got into, you know, where there was a, a system whereby certain people had different rights, like like when when kings and politicians said, well, we'll protect you, but you got to give us some tribute. Right. And when, when, once that started... That daughter, she's coming with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. Yeah, that's like, right. Look at one. That daughter. Yeah. Right. No, not her. No, no, say it ain't so. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, the obligatory cows, pigs, and sheep. Yeah, that was called the tithe. Ten percent. The t tithe was ten percent. There's a there's a there's a biblical connection between tithing and ten. Really? So, so they, they, there's no guesswork here. If you're not giving ten percent, you're not tithing. So really? don't don't pretend this bullshit. Don't say you're helping God out. God's not interested unless you give him ten. He wants ten, <laughs> ten points God's off the top. God's cut is ten points. More, more is okay, but never less. More is okay. <laughs> never less. So the man upstairs who needs ten points ten, off ten of every transaction. And he needs it. Well, so does that mean when you go to a... Uh, all the money that's been given, still not enough. Really? Never enough. Anyways, there's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. Don't forget to subscribe on our website at MidasLetter.com. Thanks very much. We'll see you later. Blah, 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 blah.